Hey everybody, this is Rhett. Welcome to Statistics. In this video, we'll look at using the regression equation to make predictions and calculating residuals. The least squares regression line is the line that fits the data best. The regression equation is given by y hat equals b1x plus b0. y hat is a predicted value of the response b1 is the slope, and b0 is the y-intercept. Here's a small data set with two variables, years of education and unemployment rate. We can use this data to construct a regression equation. For this data set, the regression equation is y hat equals negative 1.25x plus 26.29. So the slope is negative 1.25, and the y-intercept is 26.29. We can use the regression equation to predict the unemployment rate based on years of education. For example, to predict the unemployment rate among people with five years of education, we'll replace x by five. When we multiply five by negative 1.25 and then add 26.29, we get y hat equals 20.04 and so the predicted unemployment rate among people with five years of education is 20.04 percent. We can use the regression equation to predict the unemployment rate for any number of years of education. In this case we'll predict the unemployment rate among people with 25 years of education. Once again I'll replace the x variable. 25 times negative 1.25 plus 26.29 is negative 4.96. That would mean that the predicted unemployment rate for people with 25 years of education is negative 4.96 percent. Mm, that doesn't make any sense. This is an example of extrapolation. Extrapolation consists of using the regression equation to make estimates or predictions based on x values that are outside the range of the x values in the data set. We definitely want to avoid extrapolation. We can make predictions for each of the years of education in our original data set. We've already predicted the unemployment rate when years of education is 5. In this table, I predicted the unemployment rate for the other values of x. In each instance, I replace the x variable in the regression equation with a value of x from the original data set. So for example, the predicted unemployment rate when years of education is 7.5 is 16.92. It's important that we distinguish between observations and predictions. In the middle column, we have observed unemployment rates. In the right-hand column, these are predicted unemployment rates. For the observed unemployment rates, we use the symbol Y and for the predicted unemployment rates, we use the symbol y hat. A residual, or prediction error, measures how far the predicted value, y hat, is from the actual value of y observed in the data set. The formula for residual is y minus y hat. Here I've added another column to our table. In the far right, I've calculated the residuals, y minus y hat. So for example, when the years of education is 5, the observed unemployment rate is 16.8, but the predicted unemployment rate is 20.04. The difference between the two is negative 3.24. This is the residual at this particular value of x. When the years of education is 7.5, the observed unemployment rate is 17.1. The predicted unemployment rate is 16.92. The difference between the two is 0 0.18. Here's a scatter plot that includes both the actual or observed values of y and the predicted values of y. The orange markers represent the observed values of y, and the yellow markers 
represent the predicted values of y. Here's the regression line. The residuals are the differences between the observed values and the predicted values. When years of education is 10, the residual is 6.81. The residual is positive when the actual unemployment rate exceeds the predicted unemployment rate. And the residual is negative when the predicted rate exceeds the observed rate. How reliable are our predictions? It's tempting to use a residual to assess the reliability of predictions. When years of education is 10, the residual is 6.81, and so our predicted unemployment rate differs from the actual unemployment rate by 6.81%. Therefore, you might start to think that our predictions are not very reliable. However, when you look at the bigger picture and consider all the residuals, your opinion will likely change. Overall, our predictions are pretty good. The regression equation fits the data quite well. Remember that we have a measure of the strength of a linear association. That's the correlation coefficient. And in this case, the correlation coefficient is negative 0.83, which indicates a strong negative association. If you want to check the reliability of your predictions, the correlation coefficient is a good indication. The stronger the linear association, the more reliable are your predictions. In this video, we learned about predictions and residuals. Remember that you want to avoid extrapolation. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Until next time, stay real and be rational.